Hello, I'm Jeff Phillips, and thanks for tuning in this week. If you have a new business or have been in business for less than five years, today's guest will be very interesting to you. I have Megan, who is a success coach, and Megan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yep. And why don't you explain to the viewers a little bit about what it is that you do? Sure. Well, as Jeff said, my name is Megan Huber, and I'm a success coach. I work primarily with women entrepreneurs um, who are in their first zero to five years of business. Um, many times, women entrepreneurs have tons of really brilliant ideas. They have a, a love and a passion for a lot of different areas, and they have a really hard time getting those ideas down and turning them into a reality. Um, so I come in and I help them create the goals and the structures and the systems and the processes that are going to allow them to reach the ultimate goals that they have in their head. Okay. Well, good. Well, I just want to ask you a few questions about uh, entrepreneurs. And most entrepreneurs that I, I know have tons of really brilliant ideas swirling around in their heads all day long, but a, a really small percentage that I know of, that, uh, know of actually turn those ideas into reality. Um, what are the first... Uh, some of the first steps maybe an entrepreneur can take to move those ideas from just a thought into reality. Right. Well, like you said, so many entrepreneurs have tons of ideas. Um, and, and most people who go into entrepreneurship, they are visionaries. And they go into entrepreneurship because they have all of these really brilliant, awesome ideas. Like I said earlier, they have a love and a passion, um, but sometimes they don't quite know how to turn that into a reality. Um, I, sometimes I call it um, ideas into implementation or turning your potential into realization. The number one step, this is the most simple thing we could possibly do, is take those ideas and put them on paper. Um, make sure those goals, I call them goals, so we want to turn those ideas into goals. Make sure they're specific, make sure they're measurable, and then you want to put a deadline date because that deadline date is really what's going to drive you to actually reach that goal. Okay. Well, good information. Thank you for that. Um, also, a lot of entrepreneurs are, like you said, are visionaries, and uh, so their goals tend to be uh, more long-term and kind of lofty. And what tips can you give them to help increase their chances of following through on those? Sure. One of the first steps is to get the goals on paper. And you may notice, not everybody, but a lot of entrepreneurs will have really big goals when they see that on paper, it kind of freaks them out and they're like, how am I ever gonna reach that goal? Um, they might be a one year, a three year, a five year, or even a 10 year goal. So what I teach my clients to do is to break those big long-term goals into smaller short-term goals. You can call those milestones, you can call them building blocks, you can call them short-term goals, but break those bigger goals into shorter term goals. Um, again, that are still specific, they're measurable because we want to be able to tweak them if, if we're not reaching them, and we want to put a deadline date to those. Um, and then the next step would be to prioritize and sequence those goals. So sometimes um, some of those shorter term goals are not necessarily top priority, and a lot of people, again, because they have so many ideas, they either feel like they have to do everything at once or they do the things that are less important. So we want to make sure that we're prioritizing those smaller, shorter term goals so we're focusing on the most important ones first. Okay. So all goals, whether short-term or long-term, will require an entrepreneur to take some type of specific action steps as they journey toward their ultimate goal. Um, how can they determine which action steps to take and, and stay on, on course? Right. So we've been talking about writing down those goals, making them shorter term, and that is the first step. And it's definitely one of the most important steps because 90% of people aren't even doing that. But it's not enough. It's not enough just to put the goal down on paper and then not take action or not really know um, what that roadmap looks like to achieve that goal. So then the third step is create the roadmap. And many times what I suggest people do is just sit down with that sheet of paper, write that goal at the top of the sheet of paper, and just brainstorm a list of activities that they're going to have to complete to actually reach that goal. You've got to give yourself the time and the space to kind of sit quietly and do that. Many times we just go, 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 but we're not getting ourselves that chance to actually sit and think and write down, okay, th this is actually what I need to do. Um, so once you create that plan, again, you go back to the prioritization and the sequence. So prioritize and sequence those ideas, figure out what's most important. And then some people, again, get freaked out because they're like, oh my gosh, do I have to know every single step of the way before I get started? No, but you do need to have a starting point and you need to have a really good idea of what you wanna do. When you see that plan written on paper, it makes it really easy to, um, when you, if you meet somebody and some other opportunity pops up, you can just insert it into that plan that you've already created. You could move things around, you could take things off, but it's really nice to have that roadmap so that you allow yourself to tweak it along the way. Okay. 
Now, I don't know about some of the viewers out there, but I know myself, I've, I've written down goals and whatnot, but then uh, when it comes to actually implementing them, there's this fear factor that stops me sometimes from taking that first step, even though it's written down. I mean, do you work with people to help them overcome a fear of a certain whatever it is? Yeah, right. You know, every, everybody's going to face fears. Nobody's fearless. Um, people who we see who are extremely successful, they're not fearless. They have just developed this muscle of being really courageous. So anytime we sense that physical sensation of being fearful, um, or we feel that resistance, and many times it shows up in like a nervousness kind of way, or you have a physical reaction to it, the best thing I can tell you to do is move through it. Because that fear and that resistance, it's coming up because usually we feel it right before we're about to have a breakthrough. So if we don't move through the fear, we might actually never have that breakthrough that we're waiting for. You know, if you ever find yourself saying, if I could just do this one thing, if I could just figure out this one secret, I'd make it. Actually, if you would just move through that resistance and that fear, you are just on the other side of the door of that big breakthrough. So I would recommend moving through it, no matter how big or small, and it's gonna really boost your confidence and boost it over and over again, the more that you move through that resistance. Wow. Well, I, we could talk about this conver com we can have this conversation forever, and yeah. we just don't have time. But yeah. um, I just want to thank you for coming in today and, and uh, sharing this with myself and the viewers. And sure. uh, if any of the viewers uh, of you, any of you out there, would uh, like to talk to Megan or or ask her some more questions or see a little bit more about what she does, I will flash her uh, website at the end of this video. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.